18 minutes to 12. You get in there and listen for the chimes. Doris will be the chimes. They come out on the fifth one. Right, the 12th one. That'll be my cue. If you love listening to this show, please consider giving a rating and a review on Amazon Alexa or wherever you listen. We want to continue bringing you this amazing content, and part of our ability to do that means that we need a big audience. Now, it may not seem like much, but rating and reviewing the show will help more people find us, just like how you found this show. Simply on any podcast platform, search for a show, scroll down to the bottom, and push five stars. It's that easy. Thanks for supporting the show. Today, I'm joined by Professor Zopedro Megales, uh, Chief Scientific Officer at Centura, and Dr. Alina Chan, a Human Artificial Chromosome Project Consultant. And Centura is uh, looking to help fight aging. So thank you both for joining today. Thank you. My pleasure. So I, so I guess, uh, you know, longevity is something that... Um, as humans have uh, since existed, have always been aspirational, but somewhat elusive. Uh, what do you feel like are some of the bottlenecks in the anti-aging gene therapy field has been? Well, I, I guess the, the big problem is that aging is a complex multifactorial process that is still not well understood. We still don't, we still don't know why we human beings age. Um, so that is, I, I guess, one of the major issues. And in addition to that, it's obviously a long process. So it takes time to, even if you have an intervention that you think is going to have profound uh, anti-aging effects, it takes time to test, and particularly in humans. So we have to rely on model systems. So, so there's a lot of limitations to the study of aging and to developing interventions in aging. So tell us about what is Centera and how are you guys looking to address um some of this and, and the kinds of radical interventions you guys are looking to bring forth to extend human life? So uh, I guess, broadly speaking, we want to develop radical interventions that not just slow down aging, um, but reverse aging. So, you know, I guess in the broader context of the field, it is, it is not possible to slow down the process of aging in, in animal models um, via genetics via dietary manipulations like diet restriction or pharmacological interventions. But they, they only retard aging by so much. We want to do interventions that are more radical. We want to understand aging to the point where we can then develop technologies for preventing, stopping and reversing the degenerative processes of aging and age-related diseases. So it's much more ambitious and radical than what has been done traditionally. So, so get into a little bit more depth around that. And I think um, you guys talk about uh, personalized aging profiles and, and how that's different from biological age estimations. But um, talk about a little bit more depth around this, uh, this aging profiles that you guys are referring to. I guess the, the underlying idea is that we, we need to understand aging as a process. What is triggering the process of aging? Um, what is driving the molecular cell mechanism of aging also in different organs um, and also how that differs from individuals to individuals um, because of course the aging process um, on on my body may be different or may be progressing different than your body for example so we want to understand that so we want to employ big data we want to employ um, multi-dimensional data from you know, genetics epigenetics uh, gene expression etc to model the process of aging and to understand its underlying molecular and cellular causes. And based on that, then we want to develop interventions uh, like gene therapy um, to, uh, to slow down, to stop, and even to reverse the process of aging in, in particular tissues and to stop the degenerative uh, changes that occur with aging. 
So, so I want to ask you, Alina, specifically because of this is your area of expertise around artificial chrome chromosome. Tell us about um, this notion of uh, HAC and how that uh, you know I believe it's a micro chromosome that can act as a new chromosome in population for of, of human cells. How is that able to carry new genes that can perform a variety of functions, including dis, uh, you know disease defense and so forth? I think to do that, I have to tie it into the personalized aging profile space because to fix a problem, you first need to know what the problem is. So how is someone aging? And that is something, like Pedro said, we have no idea. So there are many gene therapy ap applications right now that are rare diseases where both the cause and the cure are the same exact single mutation. So for those cases, it's quite clear cut. You know what you have to do. It's challenging, but you know. But for aging, it's a totally different game. You, you don't know how someone is aging. It could be multiple pathways and different organs. And that kind of gene therapy technology just does not exist. So the hack is one possible way to reach that type of technology. So, 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 so I just want to make sure, what is that hack that you're referring to? Uh, yes, uh, a hack is a human artificial chromosome. Mm -hmm. uh, so HAC. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so in in the in the complexity that you're explaining, so how do you how do we start to begin to put some order into this when when uh, both the personalization of what's causing their aging is is rather rather difficult to ascertain as well as the proper gene therapy. So uh, I guess the big challenge is to to identify exactly the which genes we have to tweak, which genes we have to change in order to. Uh, to go at the target of aging, naturally to, to reverse aging. And that is uh, uh, the biggest challenge. Um, but, you know, uh, picking up on what Alina was saying, we have, I mean, we have to use a complex uh, approach. We're going to have to tweak multiple genes. We have to understand the regulation of these various processes. Um, and to some degree, uh, uh, I mean, we know it is possible to manipulate aging. So, we know there's no, you know, uh, golden rule or, or or biological limit that says we all have to age. There, it is possible to uh, to tweak aging to some degree, but we want to do it in a more radical way to reverse aging, to trigger rejuvenation, and that requires a much deeper knowledge, which comes from this aging profiles, and then at the other level requires the technology, which is what Alina can. Uh, um, can tell in more detail in terms of developing a human artificial chromosome for us to then um, develop the interventions uh, for uh, for triggering rejuvenation and reversing aging. So it sounds like uh, uh, the, the, there's that, um, you know, the, the relationship between the aging profile and the HACs. Um, so based on the aging profiles, uh, Alina, how, how does that then help inform you to develop a, a, a tailored gene therapy approach. I wanted to add to this point as well about this, this notion of an elixir of life or a philosopher's stone for the Western audience because for thousands of years, people have believed in these magical items, right? Like a one-size-fits-all kind of magical pill that everyone can take and then instantly you live forever. But I think as we've you know, gained in scientific literacy and a better knowledge of aging as a very complex uh, personalized disease, this just doesn't apply anymore. And, and, but you can still see this idea of an elixir of life, at least the modern day version of it, it's, it's plaguing the aging field. So hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested in single drug compounds or therapies that just target like one or two genes or pathways. But with Centara, it's totally different. We know that there's no magical pill. You have to develop personalized technologies. So you have to look at each patient and see, you know, which pathway can we help to fix or make it better? so that this person can live a longer, healthier life. And with the human artificial chromosome, the hack, you can radically re-engineer the human genome. So not to say you re-engineer the human, you re-engineer cells or organs that you can put into people. And if these are robust to time and damage, if they can reverse the damage that aging has done, this is the real first step towards longevity. Okay, so so that that's, uh, that's I, I agree. I, I think, um, you know, focusing on one or two gene therapy is 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 or pathways um, um, is not an answer to solving the bigger issue. So having that granularity around the, the, the personal situation through the aging profile is is help helpful in informing the kinds of hack uh, that can be done. Can you go into a little bit more depth around the hack itself and the kinds of 
pathways that you guys would potentially create? So I think we can't give away our, like, you know, our uh, confidential material here. Uh, but I'll point out some bigger picture concerns about gene therapy. Um, we, we are in an era of gene therapy right now. So there's a lot of exciting work being done to, you know, deliver correct versions of functional co- uh, versions of genes or gene additives or base additives into patients. Mm-hmm. Uh, but these still have a lot of caveats. And one of the biggest problems is actually the amount of genetic material you can deliver safely and effectively into a patient. So with the hack, it would be a different type of gene therapy or a different type of genetic engineering technology. With the hack or human artificial chromosomes, you'd be able to deliver you know, vastly larger genetic loads. So these can target multiple uh, genes, multiple pathways, even multiple organs. And this is where we need to take genetic engineering to. Uh, for, more, for more details on it, I'd say that an analogy I could use is that right now, gene therapy is more like fixing typos in a genome. So let's say the human DNA genome is like a blueprint mm-hmm. or a storybook. You can kind of go in and fix like one or two words in there, like replace it. But that is not... That's not how you cure complex diseases. Even many common diseases today cannot be cured just by fixing one gene with one drug. So many things, even cancers, you, nowadays you need like multiple drugs going in. Um, so the idea of fixing a highly complex and personalized phenomenon like aging with a single therapy, that I think is, is a like outdated point of view. <laughs> but I don't want to offend too many people with that. Uh, but yes, I, I think we need to, we need to step it up. We need to invest in better gene therapy technologies. Now, um, again, um, my understanding is that HACK has been around for some time. Um, how are you guys using it differently than the prior you know, forms of application or research? Uh, so the HACKs, they've actually been around since the 90s. I think the first paper came out in 1997. So this is not a new technology, uh, but it is one that, that has a lot of space to grow. So the hacks that have been developed up till now even, they rely on sort of just copying sequences from the human genome. So they're not designed intelligently. It's still kind of like breaking a clock into pieces and seeing which pieces you can sort of paste together to see if you can make a functional like device. Uh, but now with all these new advances in genome sequencing and synthesis, we are ready. So this is the right time to start investing in this technology. And again, because it's a high risk, like high impact technology, if we don't start now, we're just delaying the amount of time it will take to reach that technology. So even, even antibiotics, for example, even gene therapies that are in development now, these take decades. Mm-hmm. And the success rate is not like 100%, right? So we, we should start now if we want to make hacks that work. So, so, so tell us a little bit about Centara in terms of where you guys are in, uh, in the product development uh, cycle. And, uh, you know, I think uh, time is of the essence, but at the same time, uh, Professor, you also talked about the fact that it's difficult to ascertain, so you have to rely on modeling. So um, how do we know some of these things has the, I mean, certainly the potential is there, but how do we know it's actually going to really take effect? So I guess uh, um, answering your second question first, um, I guess we now know quite a lot from manipulations of aging in, in, in animals. So we know in animals we can manipulate aging to a substantial degree. Um, we know that, for example, cells, uh, we can reprogram cells. We know we can rejuvenate cells. So we have, um, of course, not from humans directly, but we have a body of evidence and knowledge that what we're trying to do in terms of you know, rejuvenation, if you call it that, or stopping aging or even reversing aging, that in principle, that is possible. Now, of course, how do we go about and figure out exactly which genes? Now, that, that is the big challenge um, that we face. Um, on the other hand, there is also a lot of data that has been generated. Um, so we actually have a lot of data on the process of aging from, from humans and from animals. Um, and we, we are learning about how how to infer, for example, regulatory relationships between the different genes, between the different molecules in the body. So the, the challenge then, but really that's what we want to do, is to, to use you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, computational systems, biology methods to, to figure it out, to figure out what is driving those processes, how can we then trigger rejuvenation, how we can redesign almost human biology to the point where we are stopping aging. 
So that, that is the big challenge. Um, and I guess in terms of product development, well, we, we don't have a, a product yet. I guess the, the, the hack itself could have applications in, in other areas as well, in addition to longevity. So um, does Centura actually, I mean, is it primarily a research-oriented type of an enterprise or is there some opportunities for, for commercialization at some point? Uh, so at the moment, we are a, a research organization, but yes, absolutely. The, the, the goal is to develop commercial uh, applications for the research that we're doing, uh, both at the level of longevity, aging, age-related diseases, but also at the level of technology um, development, uh, including in the context of the, the artificial chromosome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, just to kind of recap to both of your points is that um, some of this, uh, going back to hack, um, let's say 10 years ago, they didn't have some of the, you know, the, uh, the details of the genome sequencing done, nor did they have the computational power or the ability to really handle some of the bigger data through pattern recognition through ML or deep learning. So the convergence or the confluence of these types of exponential technologies enabling for you guys to further in, to go into investigate into this area. Very fascinating, very complex. Again, I, I wish I knew even a fraction of what you guys are doing, but this is fascinating indeed. Uh, what do you guys feel that are kind of the more immediate, tangible areas to explore and make progress? Um, so, uh, I mean, I guess we've touched upon it, uh, the, the, the aspect of uh, personalized medicine of, uh, okay, so everybody ages, but, you know, how, which individuals are aging faster or slower? Um, particularly compared to the chronological age and which organs are aging faster or slower in different individuals. Um, that is something that, that we're still not able to tell very well, but there's a lot of progress in that area. So I, I think that that's, for example, one of the areas that uh, uh, I think will be quite uh, achievable uh, fairly soon. Um, I don't know if Alina from the more uh, genome engineering perspective has anything to add. I'm pretty happy this week because I saw some encouraging results from the Centara team on the HACK project. Can't talk about what we saw, but I, I think that's a good future for this technology. And I'm kind of amazed that it's just taken this long for people to get on board with you know, making better technologies for rewriting the human genome. I think a lot of it has to do with ethics, but in this case, our company is just steering clear of all that. We are, we are doing this to make a better tool for studying and curing human disease like helping humans to live longer. We are not re-engineering humans like <laughs> themselves. Uh, and, and you're right, like uh, Scott, that many technologies have only just come to fruition. Even this year, this, this year was the first year a human chromosome was sequenced from end to end. And, and even though the human genome project was concluded and completed in, in 2003, like, it's two decades later and we're finally sequencing a chromosome from end to end. So I think now with, like you said, all these convergences of different technologies coming together, this is the right time to develop hacks. Fantastic. Uh, my last question for um, uh, Professor Zopedra is uh, on the aging profile, you mentioned um, having a better ability to understand, you know, um, some of these profile characteristics. Are there certain tools or, or, or methods that you guys are employing or testing right now that you can share? So I, I think the, the biggest challenge is to have suitable data for this. I mean, there are resources available. Um, you know, uh, here in the UK, where I'm at the moment, we have the UK Biobank, which has hundreds of thousands of uh, individuals or data from hundreds of thousands of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so there is quite a lot of data sets. The challenge is to I guess it's not just using tools because there are a lot of you know, deep learning, machine learning, mm. computational tools, but to ask the right questions mm. um, to, to guide these algorithms and this uh, technology and these tools to, uh, to give us the answers that will provide new insights. So to, to me, that's, that's really the challenge nowadays. The, the, but the tools, thankfully, as you were saying, there's been a lot of advances in, in data generation, but also in data analysis and computation that make make this uh, uh, project possible. So with that, I've been joined by uh, Professor Uzo Pedro de Megales, uh, Chief Scientific Officer, and Dr. Lena Chan, Human Artificial Chromosome Project Consultant at Centara. Thank you for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this episode, take a moment to rate our show on any podcast platform that you listen to. Scroll down to the bottom and push five stars. It's that easy. And as always, thanks for listening.